We've learned a lot about how the physical brain operates, but we have much more to learn. As I discussed in an earlier episode, uh, we're just beginning to appreciate how the mind works. But let me make it simple for you. For those of you that are parents or educators, let me help you understand how the brain acquires knowledge and solves problems in everyday life. There are three important components to this process. The first is ability. Abilities are hardwired. It's not that biology is destiny, but it affects probability. If you're well-coordinated, you'll acquire athletic knowledge faster than others. It doesn't necessarily mean you'll be skillful in competition. It just means you'll know how to do it. We have cognitive abilities like physical abilities. Those cognitive abilities help us acquire knowledge. Knowledge is anything you learn by experience. It's not just reading and math. Language is knowledge. If you never speak to a child, they'll never talk, even if they have all the genes to communicate. If you don't provide a child with the opportunity to socialize with adults or with other children, they won't know how to do it. They won't know how to make friends or interact appropriately. So biology is not destiny. Genes set the playing field for what may happen to us, but experience determines what we learn and how we feel about what we're learning. So ability and knowledge. The third part, skill. And skill for me is not a noun. It's not reading skill or social skill. Skill is a verb. Skillfully socializing or skillfully reading or skillfully competing. All kinds of things affect skill. So you might be very well coordinated, acquire athletic knowledge very quickly, but not be skillful in competition because you're nervous or unprepared. And you might have average ability to sequence. Sequencing is a key component in how children uh, learn and acquire knowledge because everything in life is sequential. Reading, math, spelling, most things we do are sequential. And if you're competent at sequencing, you'll learn to read easily. But you might be average in sequencing and an average reader, but skillful in school because you work diligently and therefore you earn good grades. All kinds of phenomena can affect skill. Ability, knowledge, and skill. That's how the brain works. And when children struggle and I'm asked to evaluate them, the first question I ask is, what are the child's abilities? which we now are able to measure through a series of tests. What does the child know? What knowledge have they acquired? Uh, does their knowledge match their abilities? Or perhaps they simply haven't been appropriately educated. And finally, the hardest part is to examine skill. What phenomena in their lives enhance their skillful functioning and what may detract from their skillful functioning? Ability, knowledge, and skill. That's how the brain works. This is Dr. Sam Goldstein for Common Sense Science.